Another Super GM tournament has kicked off today, the 5th of September 2023. Now this is the Tata Steel Rapid and Blitz. It's in India, there's a number of strong Indian players playing, but also some non-Indian players. You can see the full list on screen there, tons of Super GMs in action, and the game I'm looking at today was Gukesh D playing with the black pieces, and his opponent was Hari Krishna Pentala, so experience on Hari Krishna's side, youth on Gukesh's, and we get this fascinating middle game of queen versus three minor pieces. Highly instructive, let's check this one out. So we see d4 played by Hari Krishna, and now the opening gets a bit weird. So this is all fine, but e3 now blocks in this bishop, we get c6, and now pawn h3. So moving another pawn, and after bishop f5, moving the same piece twice in the opening by springing this knight to the edge of the board. You're taught not to do that, but these GMs, you know, they break the rules at times at will. Now this is rapid, they can try different things. So the bishop just drops back here, does block the knight's development, but let's see what Gukesh has planned. So bishop d3 and c5. He wants to bring the knight here, that's base camp for that knight, and remember that. Because watch how this knight, throughout the game, just keeps returning to base camp. Really interesting. So knight f3 back, re-entering the game. Queen c7, not your standard e6, because Gukesh wants to go e5 in one go. We get knight bd2 and e5. Now there's huge tension building in the center and e4 just sends it to another level. You know, you could have exchanged there, got some liquidation, played that one, but here there's all sorts of stuff going on. We're not gonna go down every line. Gukesh plays this really logical move, capturing that pawn, clearing the b4 square, and then leaving all of this tension. Who's gonna blink first? Well, he goes knight b4, attacking this undefended bishop. Now the computer wants to go knight e5 and defend it like that. But a weird looking move, you give up your bishop pair, so it's very natural to just drop that one back. But bishop b5 was a very powerful follow-up for Gukesh, which he didn't play. He was probably worried about a3, then there's a few tactics going on. What he did instead was pawn takes on e4. Really natural move. Now this one here, uh, this gives this knight here a decision to make. So you can take the pawn back, not played, then there'd be captures, bishop captures, and black can get some really nice initiative with this sort of thing. So we didn't get this pawn captured, instead the knight hops here. And now rook c8 played by Gukesh, again bishop b5, decent move. He allows white to take the bishop, and look what he's got planned. He recaptures with the king. I mean, these super GMs, they're just fearless at times. They break all the rules, but they know when they can. Now he's staggering around the center here, but so is white. And after knight takes on e4, good move. We don't see this one captured. All hell breaks loose now with queen takes on c1. Now what is going here, the tactics are getting crazy. Basically, you wanna clear this knight out of the way with check so that you can then bring the bishop out with check and pick up the queen. But what's the best way to do it? Now obviously takes here looks the most natural, but here's the point, black doesn't have to recapture. If you do that, you're completely busted, check your queen drops on the next move. But what you can do after takes is move the king back. And now there's no bishop f5 check, and actually black has to, no sorry, white has to figure out the move here. So if you retreat your knight to save it, keep the material level, well now black can take on b2, you're hitting the rook in the corner, you've got a great game. And by the way, you can never swap the queens first, or rook recaptures, and then you pick up this rook on the next move when the king goes away. So these are the themes going on in the position wanting to clear the knight. So how does Hare Krishna do it if he can't take this one? Well, he goes for the best move here, knight c5 check. So he's interrupting this connection between rook and queen. Now if you take with the bishop, simply your queen drops. Actually, you can check first, that's the most powerful way to do it. It's no good. 
So rook takes, forced to keep in contact with the queen, but now there's the bishop f5 check. But look at the geometry of this rook. Since it came to this rank, it can capture that bishop. Yes, the queen drops, but look at the material situation. Now, the bishop's about to develop there. I had some fun drawing arrows. But if we actually just highlight some pieces here, black's got the three minor pieces. White has got the queen and the pawn here. Now, three minor pieces worth nine points, they say. The queen worth nine. This is a point. Technically, you could say white is ahead, but the pieces should coordinate better unless white can get at the black king. So bishop d6 is played. Now we finally get castles and rook to b8. Weird looking move, but white was threatening queen b3, hitting two pawns. I mean, one of them through the knight. But then if a3 came, you know, there could be some problems. So Gukesh looking to defend everything. This is the key with loose pieces coordinate them, keep them protected. Now we get rook e1, and the knight comes back to c6, so returning to base camp, keep your eye on that piece. Now we get rook c3, lifting up the board, and one instructive moment, sorry, this was the only chance white had to stir it up. You have to go d5, I mean, such a weird looking move to give a pawn, activate the rook, but apparently it opens a new line of attack to the black king and is technically best. But no one really plays like this, you know, chucking a pawn. So rook c3, now rook d5 blockades that one and that pawn is not long for this world. Rook f3 played, rook d8, Gukesh not rushing it, just improving some pieces. He wants to manually castle queenside. Now we get takes on f6. Not forced, but here Harry Krishna is trying to generate play and not get squeezed. So he gives up this exchange. What could he do instead? Well, queen b3, top move, but then black starts running away, starts dropping pawns, coordinating. You could get slowly squeezed. So he muddies the waters, goes for this, queen f3, hits the rook, hits the pawn. But great move by Gukesh, retreating the king to this c7 square and defending this rook inadvertently. If you capture, classic tactic, check with the bishop, opening the discovered attack on the queen. So instead, the queen munched on that pawn, hits the f7 pawn, rook d7 defends, g3 prepares to give the king some room. Now this pawn finally drops, king g2, and look at this knight returning to base camp, keeping everything, um, everything safe, the king, the pieces, rook e2 from white, bishop e5, and these pieces are really starting to sing. They're coordinating. The queen is kicked. f5 laterally defends the pawn with the rook. f4 is coming. We get rook c2 pinning this knight. f4 comes anyway. g4 trying to keep lines shut. And now you want to go f3, check, king captures, and land a nasty fork on d4, winning the rook, but your knight here is pinned to the king. So that's why Gukesh takes a timeout with king to b8, and now f3 is played to stop that idea. But of course, now you open the second rank, just so many weaknesses. But I love how Gukesh, he just doesn't rush things now. You know, if you jump in with knight b4, hitting both of these, you can see the eval bar react. There's queen f8 check, picking up the knight on the next move. You've got to keep your pieces protected, your king safe. If you jump in like this, again, looks great, but then say you win this pawn, white wins this pawn, counterplay on the cards, who knows what's going on. So I love how Gukesh goes a6, king safety first. We get h4, king a7, and now he goes for g5, Harry Krishna. If he goes a3 to stop knight b4, well, there's new attacking ideas now with this invasion, and even more than capturing this pawn, going after this pawn is really strong, introduces ideas of pushing this one, but also mating attacks using the knight coming in. So what we see in the game is g5, desperate counterplay, but knight b4, hits rook, hits pawn. That one moves out the way, the pawn drops, and now watch this knight. We get queen e6, threatening to pick up that bishop. It drops to c7, still on a defended square, highly instructive, now queen f6, and watch this knight, comes to b4, king h3, knight c6. Back to base camp, love it. Uh, protecting everything. 
Now B4 played. The pawn wasn't captured. I haven't checked this line. Why wasn't it captured? Okay, no actual clear reason why not. Maybe white gets some play Gukesh didn't like. But instead, we see knight to e5, pressures this one, and there's not really a comfortable way to defend. You know, you can go passive with the rook, but then there's rook d3, and you don't want to babysit a pawn with your only active piece along with the queen. So we see queen takes on f4 instead, and now knight g6. Finally, the knight goes on a new circuit, hits that queen twice. Dark squared domination now, because even though the pawn was given, look at this square as a monster square. Now, we saw bishop b6 here, and just as I'm looking, I'm wondering, oh, okay, sorry, you're in check. I was thinking, why can't you go knight f4 check? Right, the queen is checking the king. Bishop b6 blocks. Now queen c1, and rook d1 invades into the position. Queen c2 played, rook h1 check. This rook blocks, but now this one dives back. Very instructive, threatening knight f4 checkmate. So the rook gives some room, knight f4 anyway, king h2, and now can you see the finishing combination here, which Gukesh plays to seal the deal? <clears throat> So well done if you found rook takes on d2 check. The queen has to recapture, then you give this check and you trade down to this end game which is technically lost. So Gukesh creates the outside pawn and we see resignation here. If white keeps running these pawns, well the problem is that here the bishop comes across and you just can't make the progress. The a pawn runs through, you're way too slow, you're gonna get mated. So this was the final position, very instructive game by Gukesh D. I hope you enjoyed, do subscribe, hit like to never miss a future video, really helps me out, and see another epic game of chess, check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.